here's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez um, responding to one of the videos released by the January 6th committee, which shows a Capitol rioter threatening or at least mentioning AOC by name in a threatening manner. I was told by some sub substackers and some right wingers that it was hysterical of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to be afraid that she was going to be sexually assaulted on January 6th. Well, here she is uh, responding to that and connecting it uh, to Republicans and her Republican colleagues, which is a, a welcome connection in my in my book. Your personal reaction to being named in that, in the threat included? I mean, I think it's been very clear for a very long time that I work with people who wish me harm, who wish me physical harm, who wish me political harm, who wish me harm. Um, and it's not just Representative Loudermilk. You have many members of Congress who have specifically used my name um, to incite violence. And this has been happening well before the 6th. And many people experience the 6th in very different ways. I experienced it as a culmination of the violent rhetoric, not a first time or a one time spike in violent rhetoric. Again, we've been. I mean, and so I, I this is a part of a pattern. AOC was targeted by right wingers and continues to be. She was I appreciate that she didn't mince words there. They exploit knowingly the angry, sexually repressed, confused response from the base when they see her and she makes them confused and angry and they find her attractive. I mean, I'm just speaking frankly, but it creates a culture, a rape culture surrounding her in Republican discourse. And you saw that this reflected in when she was speaking out about abolishing ICE. The ICE Facebook groups had video or had uh, cartoons rather of her being sexually assaulted that they were just they were disseminating um, a, a very vulgar, horrible things. And that is a direct result of Tucker Carlson and also her colleagues, Republican colleagues who stoke this violence against her. She was 100 percent right to fear for her life if i was her or, or to, and to fear for being assaulted that was something i thought during the during the the riots that we were seeing the insurrection attempt the or rather the the coup attempt i think is the uh, the term that we prefer to use here like i was like damn they are going to maybe rape ilhan omar and aoc or attack them i mean and i that was before she said anything about that and so I think we need to be very clear eyed about the kind of violence that is being uh, promoted in right wing circles and what that means for women of color who are these representatives, what that means for women of color who are not representatives downstream in people's communities um, and, you know, what it takes to be uh, someone like Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in this system right now. And just for some context, also from the video, that video in question she's talking about is the one that was we, we, we watched yesterday, Emma, of the yeah. Loudermilk um, tour, uh, guy on the tour, who uh, his remarks walking towards the Capitol. He says, there's no escape for Pelosi, Schumer, Jerry Nadler, and then says, he, he says, even you, AOC, we're coming to take you out. So, like, a lot of people on, you know, there are, certain, of course, across the spectrum, you know, I mean, we can talk about a certain person who is probably more of a libertarian, actually, than a leftist, but um, is saying that that's overblown but like what 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 does that guy have to lose from saying that like what you do, do do we think he's lying do we think he would what, do we think given the opportunity he wouldn't have done that no, are we I giving mean, we that much are we giving that much credence to that guy that he's just he's just blowing smoke while yeah. walking to the capitol to protest to <laughs> riot to protest an election result we we have visual evidence via fo photography taken from january 6 inside the house chambers and such of literally republicans hiding in fear, people who are ostensibly on Trump's side, who this 
violent, angry mob of MAGA people would have, uh, you know, would have seen and said, hey, come join us. Yet they were hiding, too, because they were afraid of these people. So, number one, there's that. And then number two, it's really interesting to see how, like, literally people physically breaking into uh, AOC's place of work and loudly proclaiming they were coming after her while brandishing various different objects which could be used as weapons. They had while gallows. Also having real weapons. Yeah. They had gallows. They, yes. That's over the top. That's AOC being a, a drama queen or something. Yet, uh, a certain shitty twitter account libs of tiktok gets a few dms from what we what i uncovered were a few of them were from her own followers and supporters who thought they were being edgy being edgy jokesters and didn't realize that libs of tiktok wasn't going to get the jokes they were trying to send her literally she posts a few screenshots of people saying some mean stuff to her in the dms like literally anyone with a twitter account and a large amount of followers gets on a regular basis myself included and you got some of those same people who poo poo on aoc's very real fears going this is abhorrent look what it's like to be a woman on the internet living in fear give me a break give me a break you know, TikTok. I, go ahead go ahead Brandon. no i was gonna say i think you all make great points but what i want to make sure it doesn't get buried is you know the real epidemic of violence in our society cancel culture <laughs> because you know <laughs> while it's yes. possible that any number of and i will say you know i think people conflate two things when it comes to the capital uh riot insurrection storming whatever you want to call it is that like the ability for the rioters to overthrow the election results of 2020 uh, with the ability of the rioters to actually kill or individually harm any individual member of our government, you know, each other, any innocent bystander, and the inability, rather the unlikely nature that they would be able to do the former being used to completely disregard the like complete realistic uh, threat of the latter, which is that like, yeah, they, a bunch of people could have died. People did die. Less people than could have died died, but people, a lot more people could have died. And it can embolden more events like this, where even if our government continues to sort of truck along as the zombie neoliberal government it is, uh, more people will continue to die at, in, you know, at higher levels due to these kinds of things. Um, to the point about cancel culture, I think, that, you know, it's a strategic thing that they're only interested in the, you know, quote unquote type of violence online that might result in them losing their platform or them being unable to sell subscriptions and that any sort of and that any critique of that platform or what they do with it is looped into or rather it's like grouped into a bucket called like cancel culture. And it's just the woke mob trying to tear people down for their opinions. And, you know, a complete disregard for any sort of stochastic terrorism or you know in this case you know if you believe what people say about a lot of people at the, at the riot or at the insurrection being like confused or misled just the ability for people with platforms large platforms to mislead people into getting themselves in a substantial amount of trouble or harm's way uh by being irresponsible with that platform and so the cancel culture conversation is meant entirely to disrupt conversations about the real violence that occurs as the result of people inappropriately and you know immorally using Using their platform to stoke violence either for ideological reasons or for money and i think that you know as we move into the sort of capital uh capital uh riot committee more and more people are going to pretend as though like there should be no consequences or that the consequences should stop with the people at the riot who are going to be going to jail for it and that we shouldn't look into the very real uh you know essentially very real ecosystem of an economy of far-right content creators that exists entirely to stoke up these kind of events and then you know and then to distance themselves from it and go like oh yeah. i can't believe this happened i'm not responsible for the things i say and, and if you say i am that's just cancel culture you know scatastic ter ter terrorism is uh viewed by m many more republicans uh, elected republicans than makes uh, most people comfortable as collateral damage for their kind of success um if it's not actively fomented by people like uh Tucker Carlson. i mean candace owens literally laughed in the face of uh being mentioned by um, somebody who just massacred a whole bunch of folks. Yeah. I think Ben Shapiro's had the same sort of glibness about it. Chiratrix's entire existence. <laughs> yeah. It's just the cost of doing business. Thanks for and I think her. a lot of, you know, it's just the cost of doing business for those people. And I think a lot of people who work in media, but even don't find themselves aligned with the political objectives of those people, either, you know, uh, ostensibly or in reality, uh, 
you know, are willing to allow for that to be the case that like, yeah, like they should be allowed to stoke up this kind of unrest. They should be allowed to stoke up the kind of violence because tackling it in any way will, might lead to, you know, eventually them to come after me, the good writer at the New York Times and wonder why I don't quote my stuff. And that, you know, it's a really, really unreasonable personalized anxiety that a lot of people in media and politics have about their own positionality there. But I would, you know, I would highlight how AOC and a lot of those Congress people and uh, senators felt about the far right mob coming to get them. I would highlight, you know, what happened to that far right mob by our far right uh, police state after they were allowed to get that far without being told what they were doing, if you believe them, was sufficiently wrong to get in trouble, is that like the people who are going to suffer are always going to be the people who think they're insulated from this kind of thing. You know, like they're going to be the first ones who suffer because they're the ones who are, you know, on the ground. They're the ones who are going to be, you know, in the building when the far right storms or in that far right crowd. And the people who told them to be there are going to be like on the news that night saying I had nothing to do with this yeah yeah Bradley I mean, you just you named uh you, you said lips of TikTok's name right right there yeah, yeah. if we're gonna Chai do that Rachel. we need to Chai Rachel Chai Rachel Chai Rachel Chai Rachel we need to we need to say it right come on guys she's she, she it's a Jewish name it's Chaya Rachel I mean oh, we gotta say it right sorry right. say it come Forgive on me. everyone say it together now Chaya Rachel Chaya Rachel yeah there you go. TikTok. Uh, I just want to say <laughs> good that Chaya Rachel is uh um was banned is my understanding good um uh, I think really? this, this sort of um, no. She's she no. was for she was one of those things where delete okay. this tweet and we'll let you come back on. And after oh. a couple of days, she deleted it. I just want to say this fatuous line that in order to like be able to like call Israel an apartheid state, for instance, you also need to accept like hate uh, coordination on a, a social media platform. I'm done with that free speech bullshit. Like I, I as somebody who think believes in free speech, I think like you also need to stop uh, hate campaigns from being coordinated on your platforms. And I think Libs of TikTok is exactly that. I think anybody who's apologized for Libs of TikTok is despicable. And I think good riddance to Libs of TikTok if we can finally uh, just ban it for life.